Hey guys, Brian here for Better Chess Training, and in today's video, I'm going to be playing a rapid game on Lee Chess, and my opponent plays one f4 birds opening, and I will show you how to battle against it. Enjoy the game. Okay, uh, we are playing a 15-10 game here on Lee Chess, and my opponent has just played bird's opening looks like he is aiming for uh, a stone wall so that's okay and we will go ahead and play here i'm going to play knight to f6 and here I'm expecting e3 there it is okay um couple ways to go about this. Uh, typically, my idea is to play b6 and then trade off these, this light square bishop because uh, this would be white's good bishop and this would be my bad bishop. So uh, we can go ahead and start thinking about that. But you know what? First, I'm going to play e6 first uh, with the idea of um, getting my king to safety before I play b6 here. Okay, knight to f3, pretty standard. And here, of course, uh, white is going to try to place that knight here on uh, e5 eventually. Okay, bishop to e7. And bishop to d3. Well, here... I was thinking of castling, but I don't want to, like, castle right into this coming attack here with this bishop. Uh, I could play b6 now, and then if bishop to b5 check, drive him back with b6, and then castle. Uh, that wouldn't really be a problem, I don't think. Um... Or should I just castle? I castle, he'll castle. Then I could play b6. That might be the way to go. You know what? Instead of uh, wasting moves here, I forget what the, you know, the bird f4 doesn't get played very often against me. So sometimes I forget the theory here. But that's okay because uh, the setup I play is not very sharp. What I mean by that is that uh, if I get the move order wrong, I'm not putting myself too at risk. So white's eventually going to play this g-pawn forward and things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and play b6 here. The idea is I want to play bishop to a6, trading off this dangerous bishop. And now's the time to do it. Because if you could get c3 in and then eventually get, um, you know, move this rook out of the way, then, then I'll be, uh, you know, won't be. Great. Okay, uh, this is interesting. Let's see. He's got um, knight here. And I'm wondering if he's thinking if I play bishop to a6 of playing c4. That is interesting. Um, I'm actually wondering something like knight to g4 targeting this two would be interesting because it would force him to move this knight. Okay, bishop to a6, c4. I don't necessarily want to take. In this case, maybe I could play c5, even. Starting to poke away here. What if I took? So bishop to a6, c4. Then I... Take. He takes with the knight. I think I'm okay here. This, uh, I'm going to shortcut this a little. If he plays c4, that kind of disrupts 
pawns a little. And I, can, I may, you know, kind of ignore it, play c5 right away. I'm not worried about him taking on d5 because I could just take away a e pawn, which is actually good for me because it opens up that e file. So it was important for me actually to. Okay, so here he's going to play uh, his queen over here, but that's fine because I just want to take this anyway. Okay. And here I can play c5 or knight b to d7. Play my knight over here. And here if he... If he plays here, I can just maybe take it right away. And after he takes back with the f pawn, then what can I do? Well, here he is threatening knight to c6, so I definitely want to do something about this. So I was thinking of taking, when he takes back with the f-pawn, uh, then I can maybe even think of playing something like um, knight to g4, back here to h6, and then back here to, uh, you know, back here as well. So that would be interesting. And the idea there is that... The general idea there is that I'm, for a move at least, I'm preventing this um, this move as well, the uh, G4 move. So take this is kind of a faster time control that I've been playing lately, so I do have to make my decisions a little faster than I maybe normally would. Okay, um, and the general idea. So there's two ways I can do this. I can go to H5. But then I run into g4, and um, I don't want to sacrifice a pawn here. Now I could go back. Back might be okay as well, and then try to poke at it that way, and then maybe play even f5 here, lock things up. So let's see. So h5's out. Knight to g4, coming back here, the only problem with that is if he plays h3 and then drives me back to h, um, h6, then he could play g4, threatening g5. Now, if he plays g5, that's okay, because I can just go to f5. So, that could be possible. Now, I'm just trying to think if there's any negatives here. What he could be looking at here, too, is knight to f3 to g5, but... Ah, I think what I'm going to do, play my knight back, then pack with f, the f pawn. Okay, see any immediate tactical problems here. Now I can poke here with the c pawn also. So both of these are the general idea. You want to kind of make sure he can't consolidate the center. Okay, now he's looking to do a rook lift. And that is just fine. Um, I could play g6. Stop that. Um, so f5 right now would basically force this capture here. And because otherwise his uh, otherwise his queen gets locked out, so that's so f five might be interesting. Um, the other option here would be something like f six. F six with the threat of capturing here. Now, if he captures, then the question is how I capture back. And here it might be a. I might want to even consider. Capturing with the bishop or the rook instead of the knight. So, quite a few options here. I think I like f6 because if, if he allows me to take, then he's in a little bit of trouble as well. Uh, 
And there's a lot of ways to defend. So I think f6 works out fairly well here. Okay, he takes. And here, um, I want to take back with the bishop, with the knight. The reason I'm thinking I'd want to take with the bishop is now I can actually think of, uh, you know, I could c5 would be nice with the idea of putting pressure on this d-pawn with the, on the d-pawn with the bishop. Let's try that. Opponent's playing fairly quickly here, going for this knockout. Unfortunately, it's easy to parry here with h6. Now I'm not playing g, I didn't play g6 because, um, why didn't I play? I could have played g6, but I guess I wanted it to, to anchor my, my bishop here. I guess it didn't really matter too. Okay. Now, um, maybe looking to plant a knight here, but I'm going to go ahead and play c5. Okay. And here, let's see. Still looking to plant this knight here. I can, a couple options here actually. Um, one is to actually play e5 here. And then if he takes, I take back with the knight. That's going to force some trades and also saddle him with this um, this weak pawn here. So that actually looks really good. Um, the key is I want to act before he can get his own break in. Okay, five, and so he's pretty much forced to take because I'm threatening to push it here. Now he can take here with the pawn, but then I take with the knight, attacking him there. Okay, uh, here he's threatening to take on h6. And what I can do, what is his idea here? So I might need to play queen to e8 because I can't allow this capture here. See here. So queen to f8 looks to be the only way because then if he takes, I just take his queen. But then he's winning a pawn there, so I'm not too happy about that. Uh, maybe g6 would have been better here. Um, now I could push ahead here because he's still not threatening checkmate. So I could just ignore him. Because if I drive this knight away, then I could play my bishop here to g5. So... Let's see here, e4, and then if he takes with the rook, then I take the knight. And he could play one check, queen to h7 check, and then I just back out here with king to f7. And then if he comes back here with a check, queen to g6 check, then king to e7. And I think I am all safe because my bishop will be protecting. So let's go ahead and play this. And the key with these dangerous attacks, as long as you have a way to escape that you can see, then you are usually in pretty good shape. Okay, he's taking back with the knight here. And let's see, how can we take back here? Um, We can actually, I can take back with the knight. Well, there's a couple ways. To, oh, yeah. Take back with the knight. Only problem with that is that after bishop takes, well, I don't have to take back with the bishop. Take back with the knight, then the d-pawn takes, 
And then actually here I could play bishop to g5. And then if he wants to hit me with this check, then um, that's okay too. I can play king to h7. And that looks actually pretty good. Basically leaving this pawn here on e4, I'm not going to worry about it. Everything looks pretty safe after this. So here, the key is not to take here, otherwise I'm losing it. If I play bishop takes e5, then he plays queen to e6 check. So I'm going to play here. And now this, um, now I'm looking to maybe trap his, maybe. At the very least, I'm looking to play queen to e7. Or I can even play queen to um, e8 here, just trying to trade these queens. But this pawn, um, he's probably not going to be able to recover it. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to play queen to e7. And here, he, this rook, I'm going to try not to let him activate this rook. In fact, after I take this pawn, his queen is very close to being trapped. So, um, well, no, I guess he can escape. We're in pretty good shape here. If we look at, um, well, I guess we can look a little bit at what happened here. But generally, I think he was a little impatient about um, about his development. So, what are we? Tr what's he trying to do here? Well, I can just take here with the. Uh, going to take here and then if he tries to play h4 then I can actually take his rook he doesn't you always want to look at his uh, possible checks here but I think we're okay we takes d4 we're now up a pawn and that doesn't matter so much right now the the idea is I want to make sure my position is safe and, and I want to eventually start getting some counterplay, but uh, you can see positionally that my pieces are, are more active. This bishop sitting behind his pawns here, so he's in a little bit of trouble. He kind of went, I think this attack on the king was a little premature. Okay, now we can start... Um, going to attack his queen and he's going to have to go to h5 I think. I don't think there's any other place he can go here. And then I'm going to be able to double up on the h file or on the f file which is going to be very dangerous. So you have to be a little careful here. What um, this could be a two-step thing. I'll play rook to f6, and after queen to h5, um, then I play then I play rook to f5, threatening this discovered check. And that will give him. Um, that'll keep him pretty busy. So. Actually, you know what? I've got the discovered check already. Uh, my queen's my queen is attacking here, so pretty much his queen is trapped. If he plays, um, okay, he's doing that. Interesting. So I'm going to be up the exchange. Now the question is, can I get more out of it somehow? I think I have to
Okay. He's a, he, so if I take with the pawn instead, then he still needs to move his queen to h5. And then now I've got an attack with queen uh, with rook to h6. And he's not going to be able to defend his... Um, He's not going to be able to defend his h2 square. Okay, we are up um, the exchange and a pawn. And I seem to have a total grip on the position. So here, queen to h5. I'm going to play here queen to h6. Okay. And here, um, how do I want to do this? Queen to h2 check is going to drive him there. And then rook. Yeah, I just want to make sure he doesn't have any counterplay here. Rook to f8 check. A check should bring about. Um, no, I don't have to bring the rook in that way. Queen h2 check wins that pawn. Um, and then maybe from there, I just want to trade the queens off. So that would be my idea there. So let's try that. Probably a more efficient way to do this, but I am running a little low on time, so I can't calculate everything out. Okay, here, uh, again, I'm just trading off this queen. This is really his only source of counterplay. So, and what I'm going to do is going to take with the pawn. And that should secure, well, let's see here. Um... Trying to see if I should try to go for more. Okay, we'll take with the pawn. And actually now I can... So this endgame is totally won, but I really don't want to underestimate him. Okay, he's going to play his rook over there. Um, and I can actually just push this pawn this way. I've got a total uh, grip on the position. Uh, the only thing is he does have this h3 now. But... That's actually resolved here because to play g4. So if he plays h3, I'm going to play, I'm sorry, g3, I'm going to play h3. Okay. And here, I think I can just create a passed pawn. Now, this will allow a little bit of, um, let's see. This will, this maybe isn't the most precise way to do this. This will create a little bit of counterplay because, because now the G file will be open. I can't, taking back, by the way, just so you know, taking back with the, taking back with the rook would be a mistake because of rook to G1. So I'm just going to take back here. And... Um, here now, yeah, this probably wasn't the best way to do it, but I should still be, be winning here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play uh, rook to f8, just to take over this f file, make sure my opponent can't get in there. Uh, and from there, I could play rook to f3, maybe, to tighten the grip. I don't need to rush this, uh, but I do want to make sure that my opponent doesn't have any. Uh... 
Okay, uh, a couple ways to do this. I was actually thinking I could give back the exchange, but why do that? There's no reason to. So, uh, in fact, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move... Here and this way, my um, my opponent can't uh, get this bishop in. Okay, I'm sorry, can't uh, can't attack this rook with the bishop. Uh, here, I think I'm going to bring my king over to the f file so I can bring my rook over here. So you can see here a total grip on the position. This rook's going to come to g8 and g2. King is pretty safe. Okay. Um, rook to g8 looks best here. Here, my opponent doesn't really have any. I can trade rooks, sacrifice a pawn. That should make things pretty clear, but this pawn is so valuable too at this point. Um, can he, does he have anything here attacking here? I don't think so. Um, I'm going to do here, I'm just going to move my king over here to 6. So that way if he attacks this pawn, I just move my rook up. So this is one of those positions where my opponent really doesn't have any type of counterplay as long as I don't let him get in uh, or, or let him give him any squares that would give him any uh, opportunity to cause any trouble. So I'm just trying to tighten up everything. He's just kind of waiting here. And um, that's okay. You see here, this rook is uh, totally useless. Totally useless. Okay. Uh, let's see. Push. Push this pawn up. Actually, I could probably break through here on the. Uh, in the middle too. Okay. This is fine. So what he's doing here is he's locking these pawns up. And actually if I take here, I'm opening up the C file. Then I can attack there. Is that the easiest way to do it? So I, I should do that because otherwise he can maybe me as well so I um, just want to keep things simple okay bring this rook over and now we can see that uh, pretty much pretty much over now because I'm going to trade rooks off this way and oh okay he doesn't want it well that's okay actually I'm going to check him send him back Then I'm going to trade off rooks. So this is <laughs> this is the easy way now, guys. Um, here and now I'm just going to swing my rook around. Win his. Uh, I'm going to swing my rook around and win these pawns now. So that was a simplification in order to make uh, this task easier. It's going to take me one, two, three moves. He has nothing that can defend it in that amount. of should be be pretty straightforward. Okay. Now I was thinking he could play something. Well, no, he can't play. Uh, okay. It's one of those times when somehow he's gonna. Maybe hope that I run out of time or something, but not going to happen. We can just do this. So he's trying to restrict me a little bit, but not a big deal. 
And in fact, here I could just play this. All of my pieces are on the light squares. And then I can bring my king around to wherever I want to. That's what I'm going to do. So this part of the game is a little mundane, but I guess it's a good idea to see where uh, and how we can convert a victory. I'm just going to come around here. If he puts his bishop here, just going to take it. Could be some. Now here I could actually play. Um, I can play d4, and that's probably winning as well, because if he takes with the pawn, I can take it with the rook, then I win. But just so I don't have to calculate it all out, I'm just going to go ahead and bring my king around here. See how that restricts this bishop. This bishop has to stay now protecting on. Just put my king where I want it. Let's see here. Um, all right, now's a good time. Before. And my opponent resigned. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I really enjoyed playing that game. Uh, one of our uh, subscribers was asking if I could talk a little more about my thought process. And I thought the best way to do that would be to kind of show you while I was playing a game. So if you have any questions about that or the game, go ahead and ask me in the comments below. Also, uh, patrons, you're going to be able to download the PGN uh, with my analysis and my comments um, and you can check for the link down there below as well so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you guys are staying safe out there and good luck with your chess and I'll talk to you soon